My name's Ken Whiting. I'm a world champion whitewater paddler and I've led trips and taught kayaking around the world. As an athlete and explorer, my lifelong passion has been to challenge myself, meet interesting new people, discover beautiful places, and share these experiences with others. This is the story of these adventures. This is Paddle Tales. Hey everyone, Ken Whiting here with yet another episode of Paddle Tales. Now in this episode, we're going to one of the most dramatic landscapes in the world, and we're gonna explore it by sea kayak, whitewater kayak, and sailboat. But before we get started, please subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already, so that you get notified the next time an episode goes live. In this episode of Paddle Tales, we're heading to a place that's commonly referred to as the Land of Giants, because everything about the area is big and spectacular. It's a rugged and inspiring land that features a lake so big that it feels like an ocean. One of the longest and most dramatic fjords in the world, and some of the best whitewater rivers that you'll find anywhere. In this episode of Paddle Tales, we're exploring deep into the Saguenay-Lac-Saint-Jean region. The Saguenay-Lac-Saint-Jean region is located in the middle of Quebec, and it's the third largest region of the province. With three national parks and a marine park within its boundaries, it's no surprise that adventure tourism and nature are defining features. Of course, that's exactly why I'm excited to explore the place. To kick things off, I'm heading to the small and beautiful town of Lac saint jean which sits nestled in the hollow of the mountains on the shores of the renowned Saguenay Fjall. Not only does La Saint-Jean provide a great taste of the kickback, small town lifestyle of the area, but it's an ideal spot to launch kayaks and explore the fjord. And so I head over to Fjord on Kayak, the premier kayak company in the area. There I meet up with one of their guides, Mathieu Boulanger-Messier, who knows these waters as well as anyone. The sun is shining, there's hardly any wind at all, and we're in the Saguenay Fjord. This is gonna be good. You've done a lot of exploring, obviously, in this region. Yeah, but you know it's my office here, eh? This is a so, uh, heck of an office. Yeah, so I discovered <laughs> the place a lot, and I paddled a lot uh, in the Saguenay Fjord. So yeah, we are into a fjord here, which is an amazing environment because as you can see, there's like mountains all along. It's like a, a huge canyon here, filled with salt water and fresh water. So uh, fresh water at the top, salt water at the bottom, and we can call it a fjord because we have salt water in it. Gotcha. So that's the... The definition of a fjord is, has salt water. Yeah, exactly. And also we have one of the longest fjord in the world, uh, just a bit more than 100 kilometers long. So that's why we can do like five days trip on this fjord because uh, yeah, it's a very long fjord. Well, I'm excited to be back here. It's been six years since okay. I've been in the region. Okay. And I loved it the first time and driving in here, I remember why this place is beautiful. It is, huh? Fjordman Kayak has been doing this for a long time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's about like 23 years ago that they started a company. We're doing different kind of trip. Like, first of all, we are doing like short tour. Like uh, we have three hour tour, which is our, um, our basic tour, you know. Also, we are doing a, an entire day a tour. So it's about like six hours of paddling. And also uh, we are doing expeditions. Uh, so we have like, um, two days, three days, and four days expedition. And we can also go up to four, five days. So I would say like one of the biggest hazards here is the tide for sure. And with the tide, yeah. It's been an amazing summer touring around Quebec and seeing some of the world's most stunning landscapes. But one of the most enjoyable parts of the journey has been sharing that experience with people that are totally passionate about their region. Matthew is another perfect example of someone who is truly stoked to share his backyard. The other great thing about Matthew 
is that he considers a big part of the Saginaw Fjord experience to be the food. Oh, I'm hungry and this looks good. Yep, it is, huh? We always try to have good food because we believe in it and we always try to uh, use local food as much as we can with our partner around the, the village. Bon appétit. Mm. <laughs> so, we're in a national park right now. Yep. Yeah, we are. But in fact, we are in two national parks oh, at really? the same time. Yeah. Because now we are navigating on the marine, on the marine park, which is the Saguenay and St. Lawrence River Marine Park. Uh, this park was created to protect the beluga whales. And also, on each side of the fjord, uh, all the cliffs on each side, they are also protected by another national park, which is the Saguenay uh, National Park. Well, I'll tell you what, this cliff over here, that area looks like one of those places you just have to go explore. Yeah. Should we start over there? Yeah, I think we need to go there. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this everywhere you look, it doesn't matter which way you look. 360 degrees of awesome. Yeah, <laughs> and it's pretty much pristine. Eh? Look, it's about like more, more than 75% of the territory is pristine and untouched. And we got it all to ourselves right now. Yeah. <laughs> It's easy to see why the region is often referred to as the land of giants. Everything about this landscape is huge, and there isn't a better way to get a real sense of the size than paddling along the base of the cliffs. They're beautiful and impressive to look at from shore, but looking up from below, it's hard not to feel a little overwhelmed and a little insignificant. It's easy to imagine how glaciers sculpted the U-shaped valley over thousands and thousands of years, but the scale of everything is mind-boggling. While kayaking has always been one of my favorite ways to explore a place, it has one obvious disadvantage. You just can't cover distance quickly. Considering that the fjord is over 60 miles long, you need to have some serious time and a lot of ibuprofen in order to paddle the whole stretch. Unfortunately, I don't have the time. And so I'm meeting up with Sophie Drolet, a captain for Voile Mercator, a company that offers sailing lessons and vacations through the Saguenay Fjord. Our mission is to reach the most famous and dramatic bay on the Saguenay River, La Baie Eternité. Our trip starts slowly, as the light winds push the boat through the water slowly and smoothly. It's been over 20 years since I've sailed, and so it's a good chance to get reacquainted with the workings of a sailboat. But it's not long before a weather system approaches. As the wind picks up, the sunny skies are replaced by thick clouds in a fine mist, and right away, the boat jumps to life. Yeah. <laughs> I've always been a huge fan of gravity-fueled sports, or sports that use the power of Mother Nature. And so for me, that's the amazing thing about sailing. It gives you a real taste of Mother Nature's strength, and an appreciation for the fact that she's in control. All we can do is learn to play with that power. And then, as if on cue, the wind dies down as we reach a narrow bay surrounded by the highest cliffs of the fjord. We've reached La Baie Eternité, otherwise known as Eternity Bay, the crown jewel of Saguenay Fjord National Park. It's amazing how quickly the excitement of the run down the fjord is replaced by the calm of the bay. It really is a magical place, and the clouds and mist that hover around the mountains gives it all a surreal, Lord of the Rings-like feel. I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting this sailing trip to be one of the highlights of my summer, and boy was I wrong. Following the Saguenay River upstream, we leave the fjord behind and make our way towards the Lac Saint-Jean region. Lac Saint-Jean is a huge lake with a number of vibrant communities around it. It also hosts some of the most beautiful rivers that you'll find anywhere which makes it an outdoor and whitewater paradise. To get my feet wet in some of the rapids, I'm meeting up with Cheryl Gravel, 
co-founder of the Pinkwater Community, a nonprofit organization whose main objective is to encourage women to participate in whitewater activities. Today we are on the Riviera Sab. The part of the river is called Sepa, and it's a very famous section to uh, practice slalom. This river is very accessible because it's in the middle of the town, but you have many opportunities of uh, other sections and river in Saguenay-Lac-Saint-Jean, very accessible also. We are very lucky to live here. Seven years ago, Whitewater changed my life. It gave me a lot of confidence because you don't have control of water. You have to respect the river. And then from the moment that you can do it well, then you're so proud of you. It gives you a very good feeling. I was working in a rafting company during the summer and I was safety kayaker. So I was going down the river with girls that were like very scared. At the beginning of the day, they, was, they were telling me, no, it's not possible, I cannot do it, I'm too scared. And then I was telling them, I promise you that your nails, they, they will be broken at the end of the day and maybe you will have mascara here, but you will have stars in your eyes and that's what I want to see. And I promise you that you will have a good time and that you will be very proud of you after that. We started Pinkwater in 2014. It's a movement to encourage the girl to get into the Whitewater community and the message that we want to send them is that it's possible for the girls also. If there's one thing I've learned in all my years of whitewater kayaking, it's that as amazing as it is to push your own limits, there's nothing more personally satisfying than helping someone else reach their goals or push themselves to do something that they never thought they could. I'm sure that's one of the things that made this day with Cheryl so special. We both share that passion for pushing and inspiring others to try new things and to take advantage of and take care of the incredible natural playgrounds that surround us. Once again, today is further proof that paddling is only partly about the places you go and the things you see. It's about the wonderful people you meet along the way. Well, that does it for this episode of Paddle Tales. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, give it a big thumbs up. Also, leave a comment down below if you'd like, and subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already, so that you get notified the next time an episode goes live. Last but not least, stay tuned for a sneak peek at next week's Paddle Tales adventure. Next time on Paddle Tales, I'm heading to an adventure-filled region of Quebec that gets its name from the chain of mountains that runs through it, the Laurentians. A wilderness paradise with beautiful rolling hills, countless lakes, and wild rivers, the Laurentians has enough adventure travel options to satisfy any appetite. Join me as I explore the islands of La Croissant Blanc by sea kayak before putting my whitewater kayaking skills to the test on one of Eastern Canada's most popular whitewater rivers. The Laurentians is truly a world-class outdoor destination, and you won't want to miss it. <laughs>